So this question covers motion management and accommodating respiratory motion, which is imperative you know this topic. It's becoming more popular within the clinical environments themselves, and thus likely that you could get asked this in your oral exam. So to begin, how do you decide if motion management is needed in the first place? What are various motion management techniques? How would you use motion encompassing? The technique seen in the figure to the right using the blue dashed lines is what? How does breath hold work? And what are some technologies that you could use? So to begin with, if there is motion that is greater than five millimeters, and now this is according to TG76, remember, absolutely need to know that. Know the task groups for motion management. This says if it's greater than five millimeters, they recommend that you use some type of motion management. If it's less than that, you don't have to worry about it. And you can use a 40 CT typically to, to measure this and then use either the MIP or the average. I have a different video on it. I'll let you refer so we don't get too much into the weeds. But what are some of the various motion management techniques? So you have motion encompassing, you have gating, you have breath hold, shallow breathing that's forced or you know compression you can do real-time tumor tracking so there there are many options and it's important for you to know which ones your clinic does why you use them and the advantages and disadvantages of all of them because your examiner will probably hone down on one or two of them not ask you about all of them so be sure that you know every one of those and that's why we're going to hop into motion encompassing where in sim, you take a slow CT that averages at a full inhale and full exhale. You could also just take a 40 CT. That is how you would use motion encompassing. This technique to the blue using these dashed lines, that is gating where the beam only turns on in a certain part of the respiratory cycle. So essentially, down here, the beam isn't on, but as soon as it enters this gating window, then you are going to see the beam is coming on. And as soon as the patient goes out of this window, then the beam is going to turn off. Now, how do you determine this cycle and where they are? Well, you're going to use internal or external markers that are either on or inside the body. Also, when you look at these type of graphs, it's, it's good to know that the duty cycle is the length of time that the beam is on compared to the total treatment, because obviously the beam is only on a, what, maybe a third of the time that the patient is breathing. So the duty cycle is important, and often you set these gating levels based on the duty cycle. So the, how does breath hold work? So this, in a way, is kind of almost uh, manual gating or it's really watching the full exhalation and the external markers and patient breathes you have them hold their breath you ct at that time while they're continuing to hold their breath and that's why we say it's manual gating because you are still going to use an external marker on their chest and you're going to see their full respiratory cycle in ct and in treatment but when they get to the very top, you're going to say, hold your breath. Then they're going to hold their breath. And, you know, it's not going to be perfectly straight because they're holding their breath, but something like this. And then their breath will go back down. But right here is where you want to take your CT. Right there is where you're going to want to do your treatment. And if they start breathing in the middle of the treatment or in the middle of the CT, you just beam off and you have to do it again. It certainly, it's a little easier I think technology wise to implement, but obviously there are very clear disadvantages of doing that. And then finally, what are some technologies that you can use? And ones we haven't talked about are that in SAMR treatment, you can actually use a compression paddle that prevents these large breaths that patients make. So you actually forcefully push on their abdomen and the bottom of their lungs so they can't take deep breaths. Seems unpleasant, but it will make treatments go in a normal time space like every other lung patient that doesn't need motion management. And 
yeah, you know, it's a little, a little faster and less technology. So it's an option. And you could also something like a cyber knife that uses a fiducial monitoring system. If you have that technology, that is also another option. So definitely no motion management. This is very important. If you have any questions, please comment below. I'll happy to help in any way that I can. Take care and happy study. Thank you.